what I'd like to do in this uh, next uh, 20 minutes or maybe less, hopefully, um, is basically just give a, a little bit of an overview of uh, the capabilities we have in terms of measurements and measurement-based models. And um, basically the integration of these tools with uh, microwave office. So this is the outline. Um, I'll just give a little bit of a brief introduction. Um, discuss what our database or behavioral modeling approach is. Um, I'll briefly describe the system that, that we use to extract these models, um, the procedure, and then compare some measured and model data. And then finally, just a little bit of the capabilities that uh, microwave office has in terms of importing our data and, and the other way around. So the, the integration of our system with microwave office. So we're, I guess, going back to the great debate. Um, there's obviously been a lot of interest into behavioral models in the, in the recent years. Uh, I would say for obvious reasons. I'm not here to sell you behavioral models. I, I want to be clear about that. Um, there are some advantages to it and some disadvantages, as, as in everything. Um, they're highlighted here. I'm just going to repeat them. Um, Obviously, there's no physical insight into this type of models because they're based purely on measurement. And that can be a drawback, but it's sometimes also a good thing, obviously, because uh, we, don't, we don't need to know everything to, uh, to extract the model. So it can be relatively easy and fast to extract them. Um, the package, uh, everything around the transistor, it's automatically modeled within the measurement, and they can be very fast in simulations. On the other side, uh, there are some reasons or concerns, let's say, on the use of behavioral models. Uh, the lack of physical insight, again, is, it can be an issue. Um, there's limited scalability in this type of models. And one very important thing, at least to us, is the, um, it can be the large extraction time. Um, it is extremely uh, dangerous, in my opinion, to extrapolate with this type of model. So our advice in general is to do, uh, basically if I don't measure, I don't believe it. That, that's what I like to say. Um, so in order for the model to be accurate, it's very important to measure in the conditions that the transistor is going to operate. And this obviously gives a problem in terms of measurement time. Um, minor issue nowadays, but the file size can be very large. And of course, it's not always possible to characterize DUTs in every possible conditions. Um, another sticking point, I would say, is that memory effects can still be troublesome to measure, uh, to, to model, sorry. And then again, back to validity range, um, that is basically a compromise between range and measurement time. <coughs> so our modeling approach is, uh, I would say, fairly straightforward and simple. So we use a polyharmonic distortion model. Um, where we basically measure and characterize only the main function. So the strategy is very simple. With our active harmonic load pool system, we can measure the time domain voltage and current waveforms at the DUT reference plane under multiple uh, boundary conditions, such as fundamental and harmonic source and load impedances, so at bias, frequency, and so on. Of course, measuring the device under all these measurement points can be extremely cumbersome in terms of measurement time. Um, so it is very important to have an, a very high measurement speed. As I mentioned before, our advice is not to extrapolate, but only use interpolation. So only use the model where we actually have characterized the device. So this one is uh, just very briefly um, a little bit of a summary of what our active harmonic load pool system uh, capabilities are. So it's a system that's also based on uh, on the an IPXI platform um, related specifically to let's say the model extraction. Uh, it's a system that can sweep not only fundamental but also second and third harmonic loading conditions um, with uh, an extremely high measurement speed of about uh, a thousand measurement points per minute. So just a little bit more. I don't really want to go into the details of how the system works, but um, just basically it's a, it's a very broadband system. We have different frequency bands available. Um, and as I said, we can basically, it, it has four tuners, so we can characterize the device under test with multiple loading conditions at fundamental and, and harmonics. 
So just to put some numbers, um, a few very brief basic examples of uh, the type of measurement times we are talking about. Um, this is an example where we basically have power sweeps and 64 load impedances. Okay, I even have a laser. Um, um, so we're basically getting all types of contours and power sweeps in uh, about 30 seconds. The same thing, of course, can be done with the harmonics. So over here, there's just another example where we are uh, fixing the fundamental load and sweeping the second harmonic load impedance um, for a total measurement time of about 1 minute 40. So out of these measurements, uh, you would get directly a model. Um, so basically the system can export a model file that's an XMP that is directly compatible with commercial simulator. You basically use the, the appropriate block into microwave office. Uh, there's no added time um, for extracting the model on the measurement. So out of the measurements you directly get the model. There's no tickle tones required and, and things like that. Um, the software, our software supports automated sweeps of all these functions here, voltages, frequencies, source, fundamental and harmonic uh, and load gammas. Um, all the measured functions are considered as large. That is, in other words, there's no linearized dependency assumed. Um, and that basically means, in, uh, in very simple words, that the database model will fit exactly the measurement data within the measurement space. It's possible to measure the device response up to n number of harmonics within the bandwidth of the system. That means there's a, a fairly high accuracy between the measured and simulated data uh, within the extraction range, once again. So here I have uh, a few examples of uh, basically comparison between the measured and the model data for uh, different types of devices and uh, different types of, of load pool sweeps. Um, here we have a package device, which I believe is an LDMOS in this case. Um, and you see a comparison between measured in red and uh, model in blue in terms of output power for two different grids. Um, I have another example on wafer. Uh, over here we have swept not only the fundamental loading, but also the harmonic over this area. And once again, this is a comparison between um, efficiency now uh, in terms of simulated in blue and measured in red. Um, again, I want to put some times because it, it has to be practical, of course, to extract the model. Um, a measurement like this would take less than 10 minutes. So for the same set of measurements, there's also a comparison of the of the load lines for different combinations of fundamental and harmonic load impedances, so that you can basically see that things match. Anyway, we have done some work uh, in the um, past months uh, about integrating the measurement outputs from our measurement system and uh, the XMP model files. How, how should I call it? <laughs> 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 so XMP block, that good? <laughs> okay. So um, about integrating that within microwave office. So um, uh, first, uh, first thing is that with microwave office you can now very simply import the measurement data to look at your uh, at your basically measurements. Um, you do this by using the the load pool scripts as it's uh, highlighted here. And basically, our system can export. Malcolm was talking about it this morning. The um, the AMB waves generalized MD files that can then be read into Microsoft Office to plot all kinds of of things. So these are the major gammas, and you have load lines, gain, power added efficiency, and so on. Now the the XMP data can be used in a block the the x parameter block to actually use in simulations with matching networks at the input and at the output um, this uses the harmonic balance ablock simulator and there's in micro office also a load pool script that basically allows you to to plot contours and look at what's happening in, in terms of load pool and over here you see an example again of the contours 
and the load lines with this type of scripts. So one other feature which uh, Malcolm showed me in the past is the, um, the ability to use this uh, XMP files to basically populate the polynomial model that can be used into system simulations um, with VSS. So over here you just have a very simple example of uh, basically ACPR measurements with a function of power by using this type um, of data. So in conclusion, be behavioral models can be a fairly interesting tool, especially to get to get going, to get started. Of course, they don't give all the insight of, of a physical model, um, and their validity range is limited to um, the measured data, basically. So I go along with you on that. <laughs> all right, so that's it. If you have any other questions. <laughs>